Hi friends, it's Annie Grace. Sorry, I was not answering questions for a few days. I was very under the weather, lost my voice, so, but I'm feeling much better now. Anyway, so I'm the author of This Naked Mind and I am answering questions, so keep them coming. I have a few left and then um, I'm probably out. So if you have questions, message me, put them in the comments below. Send me an email at hello at thisnakedmind.com and I will put them on the list. Uh, today's question is from Missy, and Missy says, Annie, did you already talk about transference in one of your videos? I've been mostly alcohol-free for a year, but I've noticed a marked increase in my ice cream and Netflix consumption during that time. Any thoughts? So, transference, it, it definitely happens, and while I'm certainly not an expert, I feel there's two areas to explore with this particular topic. And one is transference of habit, and one is transference of compulsive behavior. So uh, experts such as Charles Duhigg, he's the author of Power of Habit, and he has a theory, and it's a very popular theory among psychologists, that actually when something becomes habitual, you can't actually eliminate the habit because those unconscious thoughts and loop is so ingrained in your mind. But what you can do is you can replace the reward of the habit, which is the drink, if you will, with a better, healthier habit. So for instance, this theory seems to be proven true and you can replace a mid-afternoon sugary snack break with a mid-afternoon walk around the block and basically have the same sort of results. So this means if you're not necessarily happy with your Netflix and ice cream um, evenings, then you could probably pretty easily replace those with you know herbal tea and a book. And I'll put a link below about the specifics of how this works and how he says the char Charles Duhigg says the habit loop works and what exactly the deal is with this because I think it's really interesting. But often with addiction um, and with alcohol, you know, it's a bit more than a habit. We're not just doing something habitually, we are in fact self-medicating. And I think that is what addiction often is, and, and that's when it becomes a compulsive behavior. And when that compulsive behavior transfers to something else, then you know you may have a bigger sort of concern that you want to address. So there was a study in 2007, and it was of gastric bypass uh, patients. And so these patients went through gastric bypass, and what gastric bypass does is it actually staples your stomach or shrinks your stomach so that you are physically unable to eat how, as much as you were eating. And there was a certain percentage of these patients who, after that happened, became addicted to alcohol or started smoking cigarettes, and it became a big concern. And so it launched into this study of, okay, what's going on? And what they found is that that percentage of patients were not just using food um, sort of, quote, innocently, but were actually using food to self-medicate from something deeper and something underlying that they hadn't addressed. And so as soon as the option to use food was gone, they pretty quickly transferred that to uh, alcohol, to cigarettes, and to other behaviors that were actually, you know, just as unhealthy as the overeating was. So according to David Sack, he's a medical doctor and he's a board certified in addiction psychiatry. He basically says that transference is where one compulsive behavior morphs into the next. And it's, a, it's also called cross addiction. And the cycle continues because we aren't addressing the underlying issues of why we were drinking in the first place. So in my personal experience, you know, I, um, I started drinking for very habitual reasons and, and that wasn't a problem. In when I had my second son, I experienced pretty severe postpartum depression, and I definitely increased my drinking significantly to deal with that depression. And that depression didn't go away. And when I stopped drinking, um, you know, I what I did is I kind of poured myself into work and definitely sugar. Sugar was a big one. And um, but I, I really came face to face with the fact that I had to deal with that depression, because in addition to the antidepressants that I was on, I was feeling depressed more so when I stopped drinking. And I knew very clearly, you know, through all the science I'd done and all the research I'd done that if anything, addiction is a very poor band-aid to depression. And it wasn't anything that was going to help me long term. It wasn't going to serve me. It wasn't going to heal me. Um, and so alcohol was just this horrible band-aid that was actually making things worse. So I knew alcohol wasn't the answer. 
Um, but equally, I knew I had to do something about it. So I did. I, I did lots of stuff. And, you know, there's not time to go into it now. But I did all sorts of stuff to kind of deal with my depression at a really true level, you know. And I think that um, me doing those things were, you know, exercising. I joined a Taekwondo gym. I started doing that regularly. Um, you know, everybody would kind of giggle about it, but I definitely started some mind exercises of really clearing my mind for 10 minutes a day, etc. And anyway, once I really addressed the depression, I was actually able to get off all my antidepressants, which was very cool and something I wouldn't have done when I was drinking because when I was drinking, I would have just self-medicated and I would have never addressed it. So I think this is what Dr. Sack is talking about. And so Often what happens is when you give up something, if you were using it to self-medicate, you quickly, you know, get something else to put in its place. Um, and so that becomes something that you should be aware of, because if you're using Netflix and ice cream, which, you know, sounds fairly innocent to address something that you really need to address, then, yeah, that's something you want to take a look at. And that's something you want to to be mindful of. So I think that the questions to ask yourself, Missy, are, you know, your level of consumption or compulsion. So are you doing this even when you don't want to be doing it? You know, are you compelled to watch Netflix? Are you compelled to eat ice cream? And is that compulsion creating cognitive dissonance inside yourself? So are you doing something you don't want to be doing? Or are you generally at peace about it? And I think you need to be really gentle with yourself through this process. I mean, when I first stopped drinking, I definitely ate more sugar for a while, but I was really like, okay, well, I'm going to do that because good for me for stopping drinking. And, you know, as I dealt with the underlying issues of depression, you know, that sugar addiction, like it, it just went away. Like I didn't, I don't eat more sugar now than I did when I was drinking. Um, and, and that kind of went away. But I think if you are really using it as a substitute to escape something that you need to deal with, then that's definitely something that you should address. And I think one thing that drinking does and stopping drinking is it gives you this beautiful opportunity to get to know yourself, to get to really explore who you are and to, you know, without the self-medication of alcohol, to address these issues, which gives you the first opportunity you've probably had since you were drinking to become this truly whole, happy person. And I'm not going to lie, like that takes work and it takes inner reflection and it takes really finding yourself. And really, it takes a lot of forgiveness and a lot of gentleness and a lot of love but it is the most important journey you will ever be on. So I'd say, you know, if your Netflix and ice cream or whatever anyone has transferred their addiction to has negatively affected your inner peace, um, has negatively affected your self-esteem, is something you don't feel good or at peace about doing, then it's probably something that you are almost compelled to do and it probably is hiding something that you should address. If it is something that you can probably pretty quickly, you know, maybe with the help of the article I post below, switch to a herbal tea and reading um, habit, then I think that it's just a habit. And, and yeah, you had a habit of doing something relaxing at the end of the day, and that's perfectly understandable. And just find a habit you're really happy and comfortable with. And if it's Netflix and ice cream, it's Netflix and ice cream. Like, that's fine. I mean, I don't see the harm. Um, but most importantly, be gentle with yourself. Use this as an opportunity to get to know yourself. I will say one other thing here, just because uh, the school is opening in a few days, but my very close friend, Holly Glenn Whitaker, she is the founder of Hip Sobriety, and she is launching a, her second session this year of the Hip Sobriety School. And what this school does, and I'm actually one of the teachers on the school, but what the school does is it, it talks about the alcohol, but then it goes through all the underlying things of why you might have been drinking in the first place. And it really talks to becoming this whole, healthy, natural, very um, very happy person. And so it's this eight week course of all sorts of tools around that with just oodles of research and information. And Holly is, I just think, one of the most brilliant people. And so anyway, um, she has given me a discount to pass along to my to my readers if they are interested in it. So just message me, just send me a message or send me an email, hello at this naked mind, and I will give you that discount. I'm happy to pass it along if anybody is interested in that school. And I'll put the link to the school below with the article because I just think if there is something 
underlying, you know, a lot of our drinking is habitual. And when we stop drinking, we just stopped a bad habit. But there's a lot of our drinking that is self-medicating. And if we, you know, are compelled to self-medicate and we start self-medicating with something else, then you still haven't addressed the true reasons why you were drinking in the first place. And to become really happy, that process definitely needs to occur. And it is a gift. It's one of the most beautiful processes. Not easy, but one of the most beautiful things is to really be able to find peace with yourself. So Missy, I hope that helps. And I'm happy to be doing these videos again. Again, please just let me know if you have any questions. My name is Annie Grace, author of This Naked Mind. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.